Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to She Smiles at the Future. I'm Amanda. Um, I just thought I'd jump on here. It's been a while since I've been on. Um, you know, life has been busy as usual. Um, summer's winding down and I'm trying to get back soon. I'm going to be getting back into my school mode with my kids and stuff, but, um, I just wanted to jump on and just chat a little bit and maybe share some stuff that's been on my mind. And, um, this isn't a Catholic Chronicles. I will be continuing that series that I had been doing, um, my Catholic Chronicles by Keith Green. I do want to finish that up, but today I, um, I'm just home now, um, went to church earlier today, um, been home for a while, just trying to take it easy and relax, um, had a bit of a headache, so just kind of chilling out, but just a lot on my mind, you know, just, um, part of the reason I have this channel, honestly, is to come up here sometimes and just share, you know, share with you all um, different things that maybe I've been thinking about or different insights that it, maybe I have. Um, and, uh, I just enjoy doing that sometimes. So one thing I'm kind of checking out, I have this great book that I read through, actually did the entire book, um, with my mom um, did a, like a Bible study with her and I was actually considering maybe it's not real. It is kind of like a Bible study. I was considering maybe doing it with you guys after I finished the Catholic Chronicles here. You can see that it is called where are we earth according to the Bible. Um, it's by a guy named Chad Taylor um, like I said, I like about a year ago, I, I went through this whole book and it was, it was really good. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, and every once in a while I pull it out and just kind of look through it again. And, um, I'm actually planning on using this with my kids, um, too. And I wanted to, you know, recommend it to anybody out there too, that maybe homeschools, like I do, or even if you don't homeschool it, you know, you can still sit with your kids and look through this book. Um, it's just, it was a great resource is a good find. And, uh, I just wanted to maybe share a couple little things in here just to give you a little bit of a sneak peek, but, um, you know, one of the things I'm really passionate about actually, and that I actually don't, talk about it all that much, to be honest with you, um, because it's such a hot topic, because it's such a divisive topic, honestly, especially amongst Christians. And I don't believe that we should be, um, as believers, as followers of Jesus, that we should be like, arguing about stuff like this. So I don't want you to think that that's what I'm trying to do here because it, it really isn't. But I also can't help but be really passionate about it too at this, you know, um, only because when my eyes were open to this, what I believe to be true. Okay. So again, a lot of people don't believe like this and they just straight out say no way. Um, that's fine, but I believe it to be true. And, and I've prayed about it extensively. I've, I've talked to the Lord about it. I've sought the word about it. Um, you know, and I believe it to be true is the issue of biblical cosmology, okay? And and like the title says, where are we? Earth, according to the Bible. 
one of the little lines he puts in here that I really appreciated was he says, don't go to the Bible to prove what you've already chosen to believe. Go to the Bible to find out what to believe. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that was, that's to me is, is something we really, as believers really need to adhere to. We need to be willing to go to the word with open minds, open hearts, because when we're born into this world, into this system, into this beast system, we are, you know, immediately inundated with indoctrination, right? From day, from right from the beginning, we are in, 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 indoctrinated, indoctrinated with certain things, you know, and one of the biggest things is where we live. So, um, I'm passionate about it primarily because for me personally, when I came to this revelation, came to terms with this, you know, it really truly did ignite something in me. Um, and it really truly did um, stoke those fires in me. And I, and it, it, it created an even more intimate relationship with my father in heaven. Um, it really was a, a truly just, you know, people talk about spiritual highs and stuff like that. And it's so true when you like when somebody first gets saved or, you know, or you hear a word from the Lord, you know, I've had times in my life where that's happened to me where God has, you know, I mean, he does it for me all the time, honestly, like, oh, he's so good. He's such a good God. He really, truly is. But but there are those big moments that you can look back on your life and say, oh my gosh, I remember when the Lord showed me this, you know, or the Lord gave me, you know, a repentant heart. The Lord filled me with, I was convicted over my sin and I repented and just things like this. And it, and this was one of those moments for me when I really accepted this, like it just, was an incredible moment. And it was actually a couple summers ago that it happened for me. So we're in 23. So it was the summer of, of 21 when this really happened for me. I believe it was 21, not 20. But you know, time is going so fast that she, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if it was 20, not 21. But it never, it doesn't matter. But I just remember that summer like I was praying so intensively, like, God, please just like, I don't want to be crazy. Like, I don't want to be that person that's like off, you know, the rails, um, conspiracy theorist and all this stuff, right? That's like the biggest misconception that people have, honestly, is like, you get labeled this conspiracy theorist, and then it's like, it's just forget it. Um, and it's frustrating because the thing is, like, I am not really, I just want truth. It, it's, it's really simple. Like, I just want the truth. And, and, and I've come to the terms that God is the only one that has the truth. His word is the only thing that, that it has truth. So looking to his word for the truth is, is my, you know, is what we need to, is what I need to do. Um, if that makes me a conspiracy theorist, okay, you know, I, whatever, but I was so like wanted to be so sure, you know, 
before I took that leap and that plunge because it's a big plunge to take. And I'm the type of person, um, you know, I, I don't need to talk to everybody about everything. I'm actually really careful about that, honestly. But when it comes to my, my husband and my children, those are the people that I can't, you know, I have to, like, if I'm going through something or I'm having a new, you know, I, I have a something that God is showing me or, you know, things like this, like I, I have to tell these people, like I, I can't keep that from my husband. I can't keep that from my kids. So I wanted to make sure like 100% that this was not just me, you know, overthinking or, you know, going off into crazyville. I had to make sure God gave me a hundred percent confirmation on this. And he did. He did. Over and over and over again. Not just once, not just twice, not just three times. He just, he kept giving me confirmation even to the point, even to today, he continues to give me confirmation on this issue. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's not a salvational issue in any shape or form. <laughs> no pun intended. It, it it isn't. And I don't I don't believe it is, okay? I don't look down on people that don't um believe this. I don't. Now now I can't say that about people that look at me. Can't say that. Sorry, but uh, most people look at people like me that do believe in biblical cosmology like I am just off t out to lunch. But again, that's okay. It's okay. I don't look at other people that don't believe in biblical cosmology like that. I don't. I honestly don't. And it's like, it's fine. It's okay. Um... It's just, I am passionate about it, though. I can't help it. It excites me. There's something about this topic that excites me, that gets my blood going, that, that gets me, you know, excited because it's so, to me, it's like so, such a big thing that's been hidden from us only in the last like 500 years, but still. It, it is really, truly, to me, it's a, it's a huge thing because it really, truly gives you a whole other perspective on God, on our father, on our creator and what, who, where he is, where we are and in this whole thing going on. <laughs> So I just wanted to share, just to give you guys, like I said, a little sneak peek into this book. Um, he shares, he goes through in this book different, all, all, it's all, it's all scriptures. That's all that this is. It's, he does some really simple pictures in here, but it's all scriptures that he's sharing. That's what I, why I was really, um, you know, drawn to this book, um, but he, what he does is he shares different scriptures and he shares the different versions of the same scripture. So he'll share the King James version, the new um, living translation, you know, the ESV, the NRSV, um, the new international version, the NIV. So it, it, you know, so you can compare these different versions um, so I'm just going to read like this is like from day three in the in Genesis and it's Genesis 1 19 through 13 and it reads and God said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the the dry land appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth 
and the gathering together of the waters called he sees and God saw that it was good and God said let the earth bring forth grass oh you know what guys I'm actually not on the one that I wanted to share but that's okay I'm gonna finish this one anyway and I'm gonna share the other one um an herb yielding seed and fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after it his kind and god saw that it was good in the in the evening and the morning were the third day um And I didn't, that's actually not the one I was kind of meaning to share with you, but it's still, it's still a, a, a eye-opening scripture because the word under, in or into a position below or beneath something. Um, so he's saying that the waters under the sky, the heaven... It's okay. And and I wanted to, this is the one I was actually meaning to share. Day four, Genesis 1, 14 through 19. Um, and God said, let this, this, and this is the one I actually meant to highlight and share because this is this little word, this, this little word in this verse is what really was one of one of the big moments, one of the big aha light bulb moments for me. Okay. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And so it was, and it was so, and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So it's that word in, 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 used to indicate location or position within something. So that's, that's it right there. That, and I know it's just this little word, I, N, in, but that is what set me into a whirlwind because I was like, okay, this is all happening in something. This is, this is enclosed in something. The sun and the moon and the stars are in something. They're not outside in this great, you know, outer space area they're in something they're in they're enclosed and again and i, I just want to read for you the um, nrsv version to compare okay that the one i just read for you was the kjv um So, and God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be a sign for the seasons and for the days and the years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so, and God made the two great lights and the great light, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and it was there and there was evening and there was morning and the fourth day. So these are the different words and I, I'm not going to read the two other versions, but the different words, all these different versions of the Bible use are firmament, 
vault, expanse, and dome. And all of those words are used, and this is the picture, just to show you guys, that's in the book. All of those words are used describing this firmament, vault, dome, whatever you, you know, want to call it. Um, an arch, these are, the, they give you, he gives you the definitions like, you know, for example, expanse, a firmament, a great extent of something spread out. Vault, an arch structure of masonry usually forming a ceiling or a roof. Firmament, the vault or arch of the sky. So my point here is, okay, that's just a little, a little tiny tidbit of what the Bible has to say about where we live. And, and it, the Bible is loaded, loaded with scriptures that all point to this reality. None of them that I have found, I, there is not one scripture in the Bible that points to a heliocentric um, spherical earth. Okay. Um, now, that's just in the Bible, though. And here it is. Here's the thing. If you believe the word of God and you take the word of God for what it says. Now, I understand that a lot of things in the Bible are not meant to be taken literally. I, I do understand that. Um, and there's a time that you shouldn't be taking things literally but I, I believe that, that the times that are describing where we live should be taken literally. Therefore, I'm going to believe what God says when he talks about where we live and he has his descriptions of these things. Um, again, I know this is a defy... I can't talk today, guys. I know this is a divisive topic, but I bite my tongue most of the time, but this is my channel and it was on my mind and I was, you know, meditating on God's word and what God says about where we live. And I just wanted to share a little bit with you guys, you know, and maybe somebody out there might choose to go look for themselves in the word of God themselves. You got to get past that cognitive dissonance. I had it for years and years and years. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even give it a second thought. If I heard biblical cosmology come up anywhere, anywhere, I would immediately dismiss it and I would immediately write it off. And, um, and then it got to the point where it just kind of made me feel uncomfortable and if it came up, I would just feel like uncomfortable because it was too, it was too cuckoo for me and it was too much for me. And I, and I already at that point had been deep, deep, deep into learning a lot of things for a good 20 years, honestly, looking at the reality of what's going on in this world as far as, uh, you know, the politics and in just uh, the reality of um, 
you know, medical stuff, uh, the pharmacy, the big pharma and um, who's running the show around, you know, on this plant, on this planet Earth, whatever, <laughs> you know, all of that. So I had already been come to terms with all that and, and I wasn't in any kind of delusion like with political crap and and stuff I already had come to the you know terms with the fact that it doesn't matter who you vote for and you know they're they're gonna put whoever they want in there and that um you know they have their agenda and um they um you know the left and the right they worked together behind closed doors, all of this stuff. Okay. I already was there for a long time, but this particular topic, I, I couldn't do it. I was like, no, there, no, no, no. That's just, it's too much. It's, it's too off the rails. I can't, I can't do this. So it took me a long time. It took me a long time. Um, so I understand that. And I totally get where some people are in that, in that. And it, it is, it's, there is a cognitive dissonance, and when you have that, it's too much to take in. It, it truly is. And some people will never get to that. Some people will never be able to get past that. And that, I and mean, again, I it's that's it's okay. Like I'm not. That's I don't feel like it's my job to just go around, you know, making everybody believe how I believe, right? I just like to share because I do, I am passionate about it. And, and I know what it's done for me personally. Like for me personally, it's, it's been huge. It's, it's, you know, really in, like brought me closer to the Lord and it's really um, grown my faith um, and everything else. So, so that's why I I feel like I do like to share it sometimes. Um, so, you know, and another thing, like, I just want to say, speaking of politics, um, you know, we, we're coming up here um, in another, you know, pretty soon, another year, we're going to be having, you know, the big elections coming and all this anybody who's listening out there if you're still if you're still caught up with all of this stuff with the left right paradigm and and you know trump and this and you know oh you know trump's gonna have a comeback and all this and all of this stuff and he's gonna save this country i just i just want to say like i hope that I pray that you can see that it's all just nonsense. It's all nonsense. Um, these people, these people behind closed doors, they're all friends. Okay, they're all friends. They're all in the brotherhood. They're all in the club. They all work together. And they have a plan and they have an agenda. And this agenda and this plan has been something that they've been working on for a very, very, very long time. A very long time. Way before they were born, their ancestors, their you know forefathers were planning this out. And, and it, it gets passed on to every generation. Okay. And these people are all part of a bloodline and they're all, you know, connected and they're all part of this plan. And you can't, you know, getting caught up with all of this stuff, with all of the politics is a very, it's a trap. It's just a trap. That's all it is. Because especially as a believer in Jesus Christ and a follower of Jesus Christ, like to get caught up in politics as a follower of Jesus Christ is really a stumbling block. Honestly, it really truly is 
because what happens is you start to get in this mindset of it's us against them, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's the Democrats against the Republicans. It's the right against the left. It's the liberals against the, you know, conservatives. It, it, this is exactly why they do this. Okay. We as believers in Christ, our, our concern needs to be, our, our focus needs to be on the kingdom, on the kingdom of God's kingdom, not this kingdom, this kingdom, this kingdom <laughs> right now that we're all living in right here. This is passing away. This is on its way out. This is going to be destroyed by fire soon. And they're even giving you some foreshadowing of that by what they're doing in Hawaii. Okay. They're, they're giving you some, they're giving you some foreshadowing of that. Okay. So honestly, like to have your hopes set on this world, I feel really sorry for the people that do that. And anybody who puts any kind of hope in like Trump or anybody, anybody else, any, you know, Hillary, whoever, Obama, whoever, okay? I feel sorry for you because you are going to be greatly disappointed, my friend. Just like if you put hope in anybody, in any human person besides the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to be extremely disappointed. So, you know, I see all the madness going on and, and, you know, people getting all revved up and we're not even, you know, there yet. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like next year. It's going to be off the rails crazy because, you know, the Trumpers are convinced that they were, you know, cheated out of the election because it was a fraud, fraudulent election, which again, like it's all fraudulent. That's the thing. It, it, it all is. Okay. Um, let me let my cat in. It, it all is. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's a fraudulent election. Well, yeah, the whole, the whole system is, where is she? Hey, mittens, come on. It's like, I'm, I'm opening the door. Oh, come on. You know, the whole system is fraudulent, right? I mean, whether it's Trump or whatever, um, I think it was, um, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt who said, he was quoted as saying, oh, I could be wrong. It could be the Delanor, Delan, uh, am I saying that right? the other Roosevelt, but I think, I think I want, I want to say it was Teddy who said it, but it could be the other one, the one that was president during World War II that said presidents are not elected. They are selected. So they tell you straight up, they tell you what, what, what's up. You know, it's just that we don't listen because we want to live in this delusion. Um, I guess we want to live in a delusion of like we have some kind of say in all of this. Um, it's funny. I saw a bumper sticker today when I was driving on my way to church that said, we the people are pissed off. And I was kind of laughing with my daughter because, you know, it's like. Yeah. Okay. We, the people are pissed off, but here's the thing as a believer in Jesus Christ, I'm not really because 
I don't have any faith in this country. Like, that's not where my allegiance is. That's not where I put my hope. In any nation or country is not where I do that you know I my hope is in the Lord 100% like that's where my hope is it's in the Lord Jesus Christ not in this country not in a president none of that um you know the only thing what pisses me off you know or whatever you know sorry for my language but what gets my goat maybe that's a nicer way of saying it is the crap they're putting in the food, uh, the water, the air, you know, the stuff they're spraying in the skies. That gets me upset sometimes because it's it's evil. It's just pure evil what, what they're doing. Um, but that has nothing to do with you know, me putting any kind of stock into being an American, that that's to do with just this, they're doing this all over the world. They're doing this everywhere. You know, they're just doing this to the human race. You know, they're, they're doing this to all peoples because they want to, you know, it's population. They, they want to do the population control crap. And yet they tell us that, you know, um, the world's overpopulated. <laughs> have you driven across this country? Have you? I have. I've done it a few times in my life. I've driven from Massachusetts to Oregon tw twice. Uh, California to Massachusetts when I was a kid. But I've driven across and there are huge parts of this country that there's nobody there it is just wilderness it is just open wilderness okay so don't tell me that we're overpopulated i mean that's ridiculous you know Never mind, that's just the U.S., right? Never mind, like, other countries, like Siberia, Russia. I mean, is China overpopulated? Yeah. You know, um, is, you know, go to New York City, is it overpopulated? Yes. L.A., yes. Boston, yeah. Well, duh, I mean, those are cities, you know? You know, and... uh yeah, the cities are overpopulated. Okay. You know. Um, that's part of the reason I don't want to live in a city. You know, um, I live out in the country. I mean, I don't live out way in the country. I, I live close, in close proximity to cities. But where we live, we're, we're out in the woods, essentially. Our neighbors are not close. You know, um, just things like this. These are just the lies. These are just the lies go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Okay. And they're all there to put every, you know, to indoctrinate you. To put you in a certain mindset so that you will get information with their agenda and you will be a good citizen in this new world that they want to, you know, put forward with smart cities and everything else, you know, and, and, you know. That's the other thing that they're doing. And, you know, they want to make these smart cities where, you know, you are like stuck in like this vicinity of just like you, you stay in this, this, this one area, you know, they're doing it in China already. Um, 
there's so much, guys. There's so much that I could talk about. <laughs> um, my thing is, it you know, going back to that bumper sticker about being pissed off. Like, none of this stuff really pisses me off, honestly, because um, the way I see all of this is it all, this all has to happen, right? This all has to happen because this is where we're at on the timeline of, of biblical prophecy. This, this is where we are. This, this is where we are. And in, 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 you know, the history of the world of, of this world and of mankind, you know, it's, and this is, this is the moment we're in. And this all has to happen in order for Jesus Christ to return and to come back, you know, and he's going to come back and he's going to deal with all of this nonsense. He's going to deal with all of these people who are doing horrific crimes to humanity, like poisoning us through the air, the water, the food, the needle, the, all of it through, you know, he's going to deal with all of these people that have done all of these horrible things of, you know, crimes against humanity. He's going to deal with it, you know, for all of the people who let the enemy take control of their lives and didn't humble themselves and didn't come to repentance and humble themselves unto the Lord and did horrible, horrific things to people because they let the enemy take control of them and rule them. And they, in turn, chose to do horrible, horrible things to loved ones, to people, you know. And he's going to deal with all of that. All of it. So I have to remind myself of that quite frequently myself. Because, you know, I have a lot going on in my life. Um, like I know so many of you do. Spiritual warfare is off the, the hook, right? Off the hook for fall believers. If you're a believer and you're trying to truly walk with the Lord in your life, it, it's all spiritual warfare is off the hook. Um, but that's okay. You know, that's okay. Um, I see the demonic influence just increasing. Um, and you know, some days are better than others for me. Some days it really gets to me. And some days I just feel like overwhelmed. And I just want to like scream. And you know, with different things going on in my life. Um, and I'm just in awe of how nasty the enemy is. And how much he really does hate me. And then some days I'm just like, hey, you know what? This has to happen. This has to happen because, you know, these are the days we're living in. We are living in these, these, these days and everything is winding up. So things are becoming more intense. Um, and it's so crystal clear to me and, you know, that you see it, just everything working out and how everything's just being revealed. Um, you know, I've talked about this in other videos. We are living in a time of revealing like no other, like things are just being revealed left and right. And it blows my mind that some people are literally still just like not seeing it. It's like, really? Ugh, gosh. Okay. That kind of blows my mind. It's so in your face. I don't know. But, you know,
So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up because I'm already looking, looking at the time. I'm already at 45 minutes. I can blab on forever, you know. I'm going to wrap it up and just say, hey, you know, God bless everybody. I Like I mentioned, I will be continuing. I just wanted to check in with you guys. It's been a while since I've been up here. Um, and I didn't really feel like doing a Catholic Chronicles or anything. I just wanted to ch like talk a little bit. So um, I will be continuing. I'm, I do plan on finishing up the Catholic Chronicles because I, I have learned a lot from that. And I hope you guys, whoever has been listening to that, I hope you guys are enjoying it and learning from it too. And like I said, I was thinking about maybe delving into that book, Where Are We Earth, According to the Bible. I um, find it extremely interesting. And uh, I don't know, maybe somebody out there might be interested in that too. So guys, take care. Remember... There's always a reason to smile with Jesus. No matter what's going on, there's always a reason to smile because of him. So God bless, guys. Until next time.